how did you end up uh, as the trainer at uh, Can-Am Wrestling here in Windsor? Ah, uh, very interesting question. Um, first was kind of happenstance uh, in 2006. Uh, well, in 2000, sorry, excuse me, in 2005. Um, I had, in 2004, been stabbed uh, by a nefarious individual in Nashville, Tennessee, and was recovered from that injury and just beginning a new push with Eric Young in uh, TNA at the time. We were working our way towards the tag titles and uh, I had just won the tag titles in Memphis with Eric Young uh, and got knocked off the apron and blew my knee out. All four ligaments in there if you want to get the, uh, the scarring. All right, we got two good zipper scars right in there. That goes with all four ligaments, MCL, ACL, PCL and LCL all being unattached from the bone and having to be surgically repaired and put back in. So uh, where did I do that? I did it in Windsor. I was living in Nashville at the time but uh, I, I got surgery done in Windsor. Being Canadian is a wonderful thing <laughs> and uh, made my recovery here at the Can-Am Dojo and while here I helped out with Scott's school as much as possible uh, and made every effort that I could to become part of the team. And then uh, later on that year, he offered me kind of like a coaching spot. And so I helped out at that point. Then later on, after recovering from the knee surgery and uh, another stomach repair, uh, I ended up moving to Windsor and at that time joined up with the Can-Am team uh, uh, kind of uh, as a coach that, at that point. And you were trained in Stampede Wrestling in the dungeon, is that correct? Yeah, uh, I, was, uh, I started in the dungeon in 97 under Bruce and Ross Hart with uh, pepperings of uh, uh, appearances from everybody from Davy Boy Smith to the Anvil Jim Neidhart um, and uh, I, I was in the dungeon from 97 till about 2004 uh, was when I basically stopped going and about 99, 2000, 2001 we were running like I was helping to run a lot of classes there and uh, do a lot of the training there at that point as well I'm sure you kind of remember some of those days. Um, and then, uh, um, yeah, uh, like four to, probably three to four days a week at least for a good five years. And at that time, they were also running pretty regularly on weekends. Yeah, uh, as much as like, we were, we were, we were running shows four days a week. Some days, uh, Bob Johnson, love you, uh, did a great job uh, uh, getting our first couple of years just stacked full of bookings, which was awesome. And you got into a little, uh, I guess, incident with Carl LeDuc in Stampede Wrestling. What was that all about? Uh, well, uh, at the time, uh, Carl hung out with some uh, scumbags, you know. We all make bad life choices. Carl's a changed man now, he's excellent. But uh, at the time, he used to hang out with some pretty uh, shady characters. And some of these shady characters pepper sprayed my best friend Vince, uh, who was working at the door of a nightclub at the time. Uh, so. Uh, when questioned about it, Carl proceeded to lie his face off and deservedly received a beating for his uh, inaccuracy, shall we call it, and his association and shit like that when he should have been standing up with boys. And during that time, you also had uh, numerous WWE tryouts. You want to just briefly go through some of those? Uh, well, uh, you know, um, at the time, uh, ability wise and stuff like that we were all kind of firing on all cylinders but they had a Chris Jericho so they certainly didn't need what was at that time soon to be a second one um, the first couple uh, we did really well uh, and we're told very 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 positive feedback obviously we were green but like we're you know there is a lot of like next year we're gonna look at you to hire you kind of thing the next year though uh, I injured my arm severed nerves in my neck so there was big I missed out on a whole schwack of opportunities there, uh, both WWE and Japan. Uh, and then uh, when I came back from that kind of uh, TNA was the next door open, so I took that. But in the midst of my knee surgery and stuff like that, I had uh, about a six month window where I wasn't under contract. And at that time was looked at three or four more times, did uh, SmackDown with the Road Warriors, uh, Sunday Night Heat with Tyson Tomko, all that kind of stuff. And again, 
told the same thing. We really like you, you know, we like your work, but are you injury prone at this point? And it's like, okay, well, there's nothing I can do about that kind of stuff. Like, you know, in this business, sometimes you get labeled injury prone or whatever, and that's kind of the way it goes. And you had a run as TNA X Division champion back when I guess TNA was at the height of its popularity. Uh, would that have been the highlight of your career for you? Oh, absolutely. At, this, like, at that point, uh, winning a world title and being, you know, like, you know, nationally ranked or internationally ranked and all that kind of stuff, that would definitely be the high point and uh, the, the major feather in the cap at this point. Um, it, it was a great opportunity and, and, like, to be honest, I couldn't have been happier to do it with Jay Lethal, who is probably one of the top ten workers on the planet. And you also work directly with uh, Kevin Nash as part of the paparazzi yep. group. Uh, do you have any interesting stories about Nash? Oh man, Nash! Nash is the man. Like I, I like, you've never seen command of a room like Nash. If he sits down and starts his learning tree stuff, every everybody in the room is transfixed. So the guy's a magician because he is the greatest example of someone making a fortune out of the absolute least amount of effort possible. And he's a genius for it. And you also worked with the Dudleys. What were they like? Oh, they were fantastic. Uh, like two smarter guys in this business you're not going to find. They've got this great yin and yang, uh, 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 good cop, bad cop dynamic to them. Uh, they're so good at their jobs. They create like so many opportunities and moments which they're so awesome at um, and that's why they've been so successful is they're just amazing at creating moments uh, and knowing when to, to go up when to go down like when to dial it up when to dial it back so and so many what do you think about uh, TNA now becoming global force wrestling there's a merger do you think this is good for the future of uh, the wrestling business and the development of uh, the impact show oh when when you compare this okay like like let's timeline this for just a second 2004 5 and 6 the things that were going on with TNA and impact at the time there were you know various writers coming in out there was this there was that there were so many different influences uh, and, and financial this and, and and owner that and blah you know and it's been an ownership battle for for so many years of like you know uh, it, are, are the Carters doing the right thing is this the right way to go is this the right television is this the right channel like now it seems like there is a home there is a platform there is direction there are the right captains steering the ship you know it might just be that magic moment where a new you know number two a new wcw if you will if you will gets created uh and i'm all for it did you deal much directly with dixie carter in the past when you were in tna uh, only in so much as we spoke on various uh, uh different things and at any time i ever got in trouble which was fairly often and what about Vince Russo? Was he around at all? Yeah, he was around. There was a period where he was the head writer and stuff, and uh, not my favorite time. What's your opinion on the whole thing with him getting a restraining order on Jim Cornette? Uh, it's laughable. Um, it's, you know, the, the difference in the business nowadays is you look at the old school Corny who... You know, for those of you who probably don't know, when Corny broke in, I am absolutely sure he got the sh holy shit beat out of him on a nightly basis for weeks on end, months on end, had a mouthful of shit and never said a word about it, right? And then you get fucking writer Vince Russo, who's just so smart in business. He just knows so much. But as a guy who's seen success happen for people in the business he's never been that integral to anybody's success so for him to claim success after you know other people basically made and created all the greatest characters you've ever seen and then to take credit for that man come on and you don't have to answer this but uh we've used sunny a few times in great north wrestling and she kind of passed along to me one of those times that uh you and her may have... Uh, oh, I, I, I gave her a ride to the airport, that kind of stuff. Like, Sunny's awesome, don't get me wrong. A lot of problems, poor girl, I hope. She's out, you know, out of the hospital and all that. A lot of sick, a lot of that going around. But that's, you know, at a certain point in your career, you're allowed that stuff. When you're a Hall of Famer, hey, who are we to talk? 
Are we wearing rings? Nope. So, cast not the first stone. Hey, I hope she's doing great. And you're still wrestling and oh, yeah. as well as training? Well, and that's I, it's funny because I had taken a hiatus. Uh, my ex-wife made me hate wrestling, so I, I'm back to being, you know, normal again now and wrestling is a lot of fun i'm in the dojo four weeks four days a week with students working on great stuff we have a ton of fun so i'm you know i take bookings that are fun now i don't uh i, I kind of price myself out of the the regular booking range on purpose um but at the same time right you know when i'm on a show <laughs> you're guaranteed one of two things a an actual heel uh or b the most entertaining baby face you've ever seen and uh, we kind of got the news today there's going to be a gut gut check type of show being recorded uh, here at the Can-Am Dojo. Are you going to be the head trainer for that show? Do well, you Scott Moore is the head trainer uh, at the Can-Am Dojo always. I am a trainer or the head trainer, assistant coach you would call it then, uh, uh, here. And, uh, you know, Scott's the man, but I'm the guy who's here day to day doing the squats with kids most of the time. Most of the time. Still doing push-ups, still doing crunches, still you know banging them out. Uh, um, you know, I couldn't be happier about it. I look forward to seeing what it becomes. Uh, you know, I have no expectations of anything, but I think we're gonna we're gonna hit a, a little bit of a home run with this one. And you had a few matches with Ted Hart in your Stampede days. Uh, he's a pretty amazing wrestler, but he's had some personal issues. Uh, what's your opinion on him? Um, I think, and I, like, I, I, keep, I continue to go on record with this, and I will continue. Like, I, I watch, uh, um, you know, WWE, uh, uh, Impact, uh, Lucha Underground, Ring of Honor. I see all the workers that are out there. There's, there's some talented people across the globe. I will go to my grave saying, Ted Hart, Harry Smith, Tyson Kidd or TJ Wilson are the most talented in-ring performers I think I've ever seen ever anywhere. There's nothing they can't do. There's amazing selling. There's amazing storytelling. There's, like, I couldn't ask for a better worker. That said, Ted obviously has some issues. And growing up in the family uh, uh, um, at the time that he did, there were so many things, you know, like uh, so many tragedies in a row at a time when he should have been banging on all cylinders and, like, Physically was, but mentally, you know, you're, you're, Owen dies, uh, you know, Grammy and Grampy start going. Like, all those different things combined for him, like, you know, Ted has had a lot of problems and issues, and, and he's done exceptionally well for himself. I think he could have done more, but at the same time, that's entirely, you know, a, a objective, subjective kind of opinion. And finally, Smith Hart recently uh, passed away. I know you knew him quite well. Do you have any memories of oh, him? Oh, man. Uh, Smith was uh, like such a character and, and like one of my earliest fondest memories of Smith and this is the story I told the day he died because it's like it brings a smile to my face every time I think of it. Smith at one point used to live in the, in the carriage house or the back house at Hart House uh, and it was the dead of winter. It was probably like January, February of 98, something like that. I know I had just started training and I'd only seen Smith a couple of times, hadn't really talked to him. But it's the dead of winter and he came into the dungeon and we had a conversation and he was you know nice guy and we uh, um, had of course the, the heart accent and, oh yeah Joni uh, yeah, it's nice to meet you and oh, that kind of stuff and he walked away and I remember looking down going where the fuck are his shoes and he walked outside in bare feet and he walked to the back house and I, I kind of wandered out wandering out looking after him and he walked around and, and like walked around all day and then came back down later and I was, I was dumbfounded because it's Calgary in the dead of winter it's probably minus 15 20 you know it's snow it's frozen so he comes back down and I see and it like from this point on all I can think of is he's got Fred Flintstone's feet uh, it looks like he could stop a boulder car with these things they're mat like his toes are as thick around as my fist and uh, now it I've 100% explained why he doesn't need any kind of shoes or anything to walk around in because he's got Fred Flintstone's feet. And where can people follow you? 
that wanted to follow you on social media. All right, so I am uh, Twittered at uh, Dark Lord Divine, or, or sorry, that's Instagram, I am Dark Lord Divine. Twitter, I am uh, Dungeon Divine. Uh, on Facebook, obviously, Johnny Divine, and uh, anywhere else you can reach me. Gmail, Canadian Divine at gmail.com, or anybody with interest or uh, questions about the Can Am Dojo and the school can email Can Am Wrestling at hotmail.com uh, and get either Scott Demore or myself at those email addresses. All right, well, uh, thank you very much, and we hope to see you back in Great North Wrestling again soon. Thanks, Devin. I look forward to it, and yeah, I hope so too. I got one for Sid. <laughs>